Good morning. How are you? I am continuing my daily uh, dialogue with you or conversation with you, uh, mostly one-sided. Most of the questions are coming from readers of You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self and Why It Matters. But as I've said before, you can send me any question on any topic. And the place to send the questions uh, is the following email address, info at jio.com, I-N-F-O at jio.com, J-I-Y-O dot com, info at jio.com. Also, while you're at it, uh, do download the app, uh, which is uh, Jio. You can download the app from uh, iTunes or from Android, and you can also go to the internet and become a member of jio.com, J-I-Y-O.com. And uh, this is uh, for us to create an ecosystem that uh, understands reality and also goes uh, um, a long way in creating a collective consciousness that will move us in the direction of a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier and joyful world. At the same time, uh, I hope as we continue this conversation, we will slowly move into uh, what is true reality, awaken into true reality. So today, instead of answering a question, I uh, actually uh, want to engage in a discussion, which is that um, body, mind, world, universe are very useful constructs for us to be in the world and not of it at the same time. But uh, in order to know true reality, we have to go beyond all concept, concepts. So let me start uh, right from the beginning. Body, mind, world are useful concepts. Body, mind and world are useful concepts but they are not reality. Now, I'm going to try my best to explain this uh, in many ways, so please listen carefully. And, um, and uh, if at any point you um, uh, feel that you have not fully understood uh, what I'm saying, uh, then come back to this video and listen to it again. And um, of course, we can continue this discussion in many ways. And sometimes um, discussing the same thing in many ways actually improves our ability to comprehend and gives us insight and deeper understanding. So let me start by just addressing the body for now because you know we all uh, have ownership of that which we call our body this is uh, my body that you're seeing and uh, for the time being <coughs> for the time being I am uh, claiming ownership of this which I call my body but look at it uh, very simply. Your body is not a thing, it's an activity. It's not a noun, it's a verb. And the atoms and molecules of that which you call your body are constantly recycling. Uh, with every breath that you breathe in and every breath that you breathe out, you're recycling 10 to the power of 
22 atoms that come from every so-called cell in your body. In one year, you replace 98% of all the atoms in your body um, in less than one year. So this body that you're looking at right now on your screen is uh, my year uh, 2017 model. And um, the other models have come and gone. So I've had bodies that were labeled as teenager, bodies that were labeled as um, a young man, bodies that were labeled as a child, bodies that were labeled as, um, as toddler body, bodies uh, that were labeled as, um, as uh, a baby. So all those bodies have come and gone. And uh, right now, even though this appears to be a fixed entity, it's a recycling of earth, water, air, and the elements of the cosmos. And therefore, there's no such thing as a fixed body. It's an activity. And actually, ultimately, it's an activity of the total universe. It's the activity that is guided by all the elements and forces of the universe. Strong and weak interactions, electromagnetism, electrochemistry, gravitational fields, and um, just the recycling of planet Earth as an ecosystem of biological organisms. So that which we call my body is a concept. I don't have ownership over this. Why? Because it's just earth, water, and air that's recycling, that belongs to everyone. Okay. So we can see very clearly that um, there is no such thing as a body. Uh, this right now, what I've said to you, uh, is totally scientific. Nothing, um, nothing about what I've said right now is strange in any way. I think you can understand this um, from a very simple, straightforward, uh, logical, scientific uh, expression. But let me now share with you why actually even the body as a verb as this activity that I've just mentioned is in fact a little misleading. It's in fact a little misleading. So let me come back to that in about 15 seconds. So I did now um, uh, speak to you briefly about why the body is just a recycling of the elements and forces of the universe. But um, let's look at this same thing from um, the level of personal experience. So from the level of personal experience, most of the time you are not aware um, of your physical body. So during night when you go to sleep and you're fast asleep, um, in deep sleep there's no awareness of anything that is called a body. Uh, during the dream state also, you're not uh, aware of anything that you would call a physical body. Um, during um, the dream state, there's no experience of that which we call a physical body. There are just um, vague, intermittent um, sensations and uh, images that uh, come and go, but no notion 
of a body. And uh, during um, the um, uh, waking state, which is right now, if you're listening to me and watching the screen, or you saw the ad, 15 second ad, which makes it possible for me to um, give this message for you daily, uh, then even in the waking state, um, as you uh, are looking at me, you have very little experience, direct experience of your body. If you're walking in a marketplace or um, also in a shopping center, your field of vision gives you very little experience of your own body. You're seeing what we call other bodies, other um, objects, etc. So that which we call a physical body as an experience is also an intermittent experience of sensations, images, sounds, tastes, smells, uh, forms, colors, etc. Uh, that we then call a body. This is a shape, it's a form, it's a color, as is this, as is this, as is that behind me. And um, the fact that I call it a hand, and furthermore, my hand, is a notion. A useful notion, but still a notion. Okay, so um, um, everything that we call a form, uh, a color, a uh, sense perception, a sound, a taste, a thought, is just um, um, concretizing an intermittent stream of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, and sense perceptions and their interpretations, which are actually just the movement of consciousness as it interacts with its own self and knows itself as that sound, as that taste, uh, that smell as um, the interpretation of that, my hand, my watch, my painting, etc. These are constructs. So they are concepts. And uh, as I said, they're useful concepts. So what is really happening? What is really happening is that consciousness, which is a field of infinite possibilities, which is formless, uh, which has no shape, dimensionality, which is timeless, precisely because it has no form, and which is spaceless because it has no form, it's vibrating and knowing itself as form, phenomena, and sensation. Uh, that sensation could be a sound. A sound is a mode of knowing. It could be a taste, it could be a smell, it could be a texture. So right now, as I move my finger against my thumb, then is my finger feeling the thumb, or is my thumb feeling the finger? It could be either way, but that's a concept. If actually I close my eyes, all there is, is a sensation. And all, if I close my eyes, I can hear sounds. I can also feel sensations um, um, somewhere here vaguely. And if I don't label those sensations, that all, that's all they are. Sensations and, um, and sounds and movements and changing uh, patterns of form and phenomena and color. The rest is a story. The rest is a story also in human consciousness. And that story includes that which we call body, mind, and the world. Um, body, mind, and the world. 
So, body, mind and the world are concepts for experience. And the experiences are nothing but the self-interaction of awareness intermittently uh, that um, is then labeled as, um, as uh, mind and body and universe. Okay, so do I own a body? No, I don't even own the sensations that I label um, the body. I don't own the sense perceptions that I label a body. Blue doesn't belong to me or to you, right? Sound um, doesn't belong to me or you. Taste doesn't belong to me or you. And even that which I call mind and body and universe doesn't belong to that which we call I or me or mine. The real I is that awareness in which this body mind and all body minds are simultaneously um, arising and subsiding as um, um, the excitations of I itself. The excitations of I itself. So right now here's a useful exercise to do if you want to. Um, and become aware as you're listening to me of that which is listening. Become aware of that which is looking. Become aware of the space in which you are. Uh, defocus your eyes. Have what is called unfocused gaze and be aware of the space we're in. In that space now, um, have um, a faint awareness of your body, or that which you call your body, and in that have uh, a faint awareness of the screen that you're looking at, of my image, of the sound you're hearing, of all the objects in your room, and um, and that is the awareness in which um, everything that we call the world, this body mind, other body minds, all objects, all colors, all tastes, all smells, the whole universe is arising and subsiding. That awareness is not in you as the body mind, the body mind is in that awareness. The body-mind is not the container of awareness. The body-mind is an experience in awareness. And as experience, it is evanescent. It is very transient. And it is eternally arising and subsiding in that which we call now. Now is the presence eternally I even find that presence um, um, a loving presence, an evolving experience in an eternal, non-changing presence. That's the true I. That's the true I. In which this, that, all this is arising and subsiding. When we shift our identity from that which we call my body mind, then we realize that I is all body minds and the total universe. And as we abide in that awareness and note as timeless being, um, then um, we are um, we are whole. Wholeness is all-inclusive, all, 
um, yeah, the dog is also in the same presence. But the word dog is a human construct. Um, what you heard was a sound. And after that is a concept. Even the word dog or the bark is a construct. In fact, the word bark is a very interesting word. The bark of a tree, the bark of a dog, totally different, right? Depending on the context, which you don't know till the end of the sentence. Okay, the bark of a tree, the bark of a dog. And now suddenly a new context, a new construct, a new concept, and a modification of experience. Lupe, dog didn't bark, it was a sensation, yeah, it was a sound. And the sound is a modification of awareness, produced in awareness, um, experienced in awareness, known in awareness, and made out of awareness. So, here is the solution to all freedom. When you realize that constructs are useful, and um, but they are not reality, that we are the creator of those constructs, constructs, then by deconstructing every notion, decons Jessica, first time viewer, thank you Jessica for joining. Okay, when you deconstruct every label, every definition, every every um, notion, all that is left is awareness. And then from that awareness, you can create um, any notion, you can create any idea, you can create any story, and the more people that um, uh, resonate with your story, the more true it becomes for everyone else. So the story that we're living right now in this world is a story of um, I, me, mine. It's the story of me and the rest of the universe. When that which I call this is also the activity of totality, then um, that story that we have recycled over thousands of years has created today's nightmare, um, a total insane asylum that we call the world. War, terrorism, racism, ethnocentrism, bigotry, hatred, prejudice, exploitation of um, nature, climate change, extinction of species, mechanized death, nuclear bombs, um, poison in the food chain, um, disease, social injustice, economic injustice, radical poverty, uh, suffering, all a uh, result of the story that there is me and there is the rest of the universe. So, can we deconstruct this story? Can we abide in the awareness of all that is? Can we start with a little notion of a new story? We could still um, we could still um, we could still keep those notions of mind, body, and universe, understanding that they are notions. That reality is not the notion, but um, that in which the notion itself is born, and then from that notion, the story is born. And what we call the collective story, 
is that which we call the world. So, if you want to have a more peaceful, just, sustainable, um, healthier and joyful world, then we need to deconstruct the current story that is causing immense pain and suffering in the world and um, then um, create new notions, new ideas, new constructs and a new story of wholeness. And in that wholeness we will spontaneously find um, healing because healing is wholeness. Healing is wholeness. Merrily Yilram, I am coming to Zurich in uh, April. So I'll see you in Zurich in April. Okay, so um, I know some of you I'm seeing are um, getting impatient with my ruminations and um, uh, you are um, um, feeling that this is just um, nonsensical, maybe uh, uh, nonsense, airy fairy stuff. So I think I'll take um, a break now and um, uh, end this uh, uh, this um, conversation right now. I think um, I'll look uh, at some of your comments and try and comment them uh, on them and before I finally close uh, today's um, conversation. Okay. Ritu says she is enjoying. Carla Wynn Hall says I could listen to you for hours. You don't need to need to reflect. Uh, Jennifer says um, it becomes clear by repetition. Kai Efron says, thank you. Lupe Lujan says, gracias for your response. Erika says, thank you for sharing. Teresa Johnson says, thank you. Uh, Barbara Ibarra says, uh, thank you. Um, okay, so most of your comments seem to suggest that um, uh, we are uh, on the same page, that we are resonating together in our longing to create a new story. But always remember that you are not the story, you are the creator of the story. Okay, reflecting is not a thought question from Goddess. Reflecting can lead to a knowing and that knowing can be then interpreted as a thought. But as soon as you have a thought, it's a story. Um, and it's all right as long as the story is, um, is nourishing and nurturing. Um, so um, I think the highest intelligence is uh, to just be. Being which has no interruption by thought. The second highest intelligence is the love that spontaneously emanates from being when it uh, gives us the experience of inseparability. The third uh, highest intelligence is reflective inquiry. The fourth highest intelligence could be um, nourishing helpful speech. And the fifth highest intelligence is doing or love in action. If we can spontaneously unfold from being to feeling to reflecting to speaking to doing, maybe um, we can um, create um, 
a new world. A new world. Okay. So, um, see you tomorrow.